Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com and in this video we work for a catering company and we get this information. We offer a choice of three different starters, three different mains, three different desserts and people who are attending our events decide what option they want out of them and we receive the information like this. What we want though is to convert it into this. A table with the name of the attendee and what they decided from each element of the dinner and also how many of each option was chosen so that we know in the future what our more popular dishes are. This menu changes every week the people attending change all the time, but what we want to be able to do is press a button and produce the two tables that we need for our day-to-day -day business and our work. Let's look at Power Query and a little bit of Excel to do this. Okay, so let's start by loading this data into the Power Query editor. It's not a table at the moment so I'm going to select the range in question data tab from table slash range this is going to put it into a table for me because the power tools need it and they do have headers I'm going to OK and load this in here we have our data and on the right hand side let's do two classic first steps first of all to name this query something useful uh, so I'm going to call it final decisions and then we're going to remove this change type step. One thing I do not like about this change type step right now is that if you look in the formula bar, I can see it's hard coded the names of the options such as tomato soup and prawn cocktail. And that's not going to be very useful when we refresh this at the end of the video or as the weeks go by in this real case scenario because those items are going to change and I'll call it tomato soup if next week it's minestrone soup so I'm going to remove that change type there are ways of dealing with it but I simply don't need it and then we're going to unpivot these columns so part of the information we are interested in are the headers at the moment the actual names of the options so we've got the first column selected at the moment I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard, select the final column so that they're all selected and then from the transform tab it's unpivot columns. And here we have now our name of the option such as tomato soup and a column for the name of the person making that decision. Let's rename these columns. The first one can be option and the second one can be name. The final goal here is to have the option on the right hand side. So I'm going to drag that over so that the name is mentioned first. At this point, I want it to be in order by the name. So I'm going to select this name column and from the home tab, I'll press my A to Z button. So all of our names are in order. And then we have the option. Now what I want is a column to have the starter, a column for the main and a column for their dessert next to each name. So I need Elisa uh, tomato soup, Elisa classic burger and Elisa uh, caramel cheesecake. And then Annabelle squid and chorizo, macaroni cheese, apple crumble. Now we can do that right now but one thing we might be noticing especially as I read those out for the first two names is that they're not in order as the food items will come out. So the first one for Elisa is the classic burger, which is the main. And the first one for Annabelle was the apple crumble, which is the dessert. I need them in order, starter, then main, then dessert. And the problem we've got here is that I can't just put these in order by, by alphabetically, by A to Z. So what I'm going to do is remove my sort step from that query right now. I'm going to close and load this query so that this is what we have at the moment on the right hand side that query loaded and we're going to do a little bit of excel work 
to set up the sorting of the food options. So they are in starter main dessert order. So we're just going to quickly create a little lookup table, which we can use in a merge query to provide an index for these food items. I'm going to put the starting from column L here. So I'm going to begin uh, just by quickly putting numbers one to nine, because we have nine options. We have three starters, three mains, three desserts. And then in column M, I'm going to use the index function to look at these row of headers, the table's headers. I'm going to ignore the row option, so I'm not returning from a row, which is a typical way of using this, really. I'm going to return from a column. And what column's got the item we want? The little index that I put in column L. So when I close bracket and press enter, that's going to return tomato soup, the first column from the selected range. I'm going to copy it down, it will get the item from the second column, the third column, the fourth column, and you get the idea. So that now we've got our headers in a lovely column, which I can then select, and we're going to load that into Power Query so we can merge it with our existing final decisions query. So I have the range selected, it's back to data from table slash range. It does not have headers. I'm going to just load this in. And we'll begin by naming the query on the right hand side, the same first two steps that we did with the initial query. So I'm going to call this one um, options index. And I'm going to remove that change type step. Then I'll go and switch back to the final decisions query. And on the home tab, merge queries. This will open up our merge query window. I can see my final decisions table is there. Let me select my options index table, and then I'll select the two option columns from each table that will identify the match. When I click OK, that will perform that lookup, bringing it into the final decisions table. I can click on this button to expand those options. I do not want column two. It maybe would have been helpful here if I had provided headers, so I knew what columns one and two were, but it's only two columns. The first one was the index column. That's what I'm interested in. I'm going to get rid of the original column name prefix and click OK. So it's bringing in that index number, and you can see in the results that all of the tomato soups have got a number one next to them. All of the prawn cocktails have twos next to them. Squid and chorizo threes. And you can see here, it's looked it up, it's brought across that index, that number, and we can use that to order the food options. I'm going to select the name column and order it by name, just like we did earlier. Then I'll select the column one column and I'll order that. And look at this, we now have, we're now getting somewhere. Lisa, tomato soup, burger, cheesecake. Annabelle, squid, macaroni, cheese, apple crumble. They're in the order that we want them to be in. Now what we need to do is open them up. So I've got a column for the three stages of the dinner. I can now get rid of this index. It served its purpose. I do not want it in the final result. And strangely, after removing something I refer to as index, we're actually going to the Add Column tab to add in an index column. Now this will just start from zero, unless I ask it to begin from one, but this is sufficient, and straight to the bottom, just a classic index. I'm then going to add a modulo column in. For those of you who are longtime subscribers of my YouTube channel, I've used this technique in I think one or two other videos of mine uh, to do this kind of work. I'm bringing in the modulo, I'm dividing it by three because we have three different stages of the dinner. So when we do this and click OK, we've now got zero to two, zero to two, zero to two. We have a pattern. We have a consistent ID for each stage of the dinner. Next step is I'm going to the transform tab to pivot column. How am I pivoting it? I'm doing it by the option 
column. And if I expand the advanced options, no aggregation. I'm not performing any calculation here. So when I click OK, look at this. It's not that pretty, but it is taking some kind of shape here. I've got some horrible column headers, but what I do have is column zero is the starter, column one is the main, column two is a dessert. Let's start finishing this off. Selecting column zero on the transform tab, fill button, fill down. What a brilliant feature of Power Query that is. Select column two, fill button, fill up. Column one, into the filter arrow, remove the nulls, click OK. Now look what we have. We have a name. We've got our three columns for each stage of the dinner. I can remove this index column, rename the other columns. So this one can be starter. This one can be main. And this last one can be dessert. And we've got what we want. So if I now come back up to home, drop down for close and load to close and load two. And I'm just going to position this underneath the existing data set. Now that might not be ideal in a real case scenario because that data set could be huge if it's a really uh, big dinner party. But for the purposes of this and seeing what we can at one time, that's great. I'll click OK. And what I've got here is I've imported my index table. I didn't want that, but I can see on the right that I've got both queries. One of them's loaded into the sheet. The other one is still that connection only because of what we did earlier when we had to quit the query early and set up the table in Excel first. Now I'm just going to remove that table. I don't really care for it. Switches the query to a connection only on the right hand side. And then if I right mouse click on final decisions, the one I do care for, load to, and I can change how it's loaded. It's going to be a table, existing worksheet, around about here. Okay, this is what we want. The one that we use for the indexing is connection only. This one is in the sheet. So that's one of our tasks done. This next task is a much quicker and easier one. I'm going to edit the query that we've just created. So it takes me back into the editor. Start by opening up the queries pane on the left. And I'm going to right click and duplicate that whole query that we've just created. On the right hand side, I'm going to rename it as totals. And then in the applied steps, I'm going to right mouse click on the renamed columns step and delete until end. So I want the import from the source data and I want it unpivoted, but I don't need anything after that. I'm going to remove all of those steps so that we're left with this. Then let's rename these two column headers. So this one is the option and the next one is the name, which I'm not actually going to keep. But let me rename that. And then from the option column, we are going for the group by button. How would we like to group it? By this option column. What's the new column name? At number ordered. And it will be a count rows. So how many apple crumbles? How many classic burgers were ordered? So when I click OK, we get this. And then I can simply go and sort the option column if I want it in this way, in this alphabetical order for the option column, we could have sorted it by how many orders. You may be more interested in that. Or maybe even used our index that we set up to put it in the start and main dessert order. But maybe I'm happy with that. I'm just interested in quickly seeing how many people ordered fish and chips. So in an A to Z order by option is something I'm interested in. Close and load, close and load two. This table is going to be just next door to the one we've got. So I'll click OK. And there we have our next bit of information. Can you think of a different way of doing this? Maybe you found one. Please put it in the comments. I'm 
interested in seeing if you've got any other techniques to do this, I had to rely on a little bit of Excel to help me out during this process. One thing does remain though, let's test it out. So I have a sheet at the bottom of new data. If you just quickly remind yourself what this looks like, look at the food items at the top and it comes down to row 16. On the other sheet, here's a completely different menu with completely different names and 17 rows. So there's one row longer, there's a lot more people though. I'm going to take a copy of this range and I'm just simply going to paste it over the top of the current range I've got. The table will adapt to it. And then from the data tab, refresh all and look at that. It's worked. When you look at the number ordered, we can see we've got apple strudel and scotch egg and chocolate gato, completely different food items. And when you look over to the names, we've got Anna Trujillo at the top and Andre Fonseca. They were not the same people where I was mentioning Annabelle and Elisa in the previous list. So we can see in the future as we move on, somebody can just press that refresh button and the two lists that they're interested in, the statistics, and then who needs what on the day is prepared ready from the messy data that we receive. For any of you who might be quite new to Power Query, hopefully this is a great demonstration of how useful and how powerful this tool is. You can find the data that I've used here in the description of this video. So you can download this data set, play around with it, uh, practice it, and that's how we learn Power Query and Excel in general. Hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at Computer Gaga dot com.